Okay guys, we're going to get things all started off by gathering our supplies. You're going to need a ruler, graphite pencil, colored pencils, and your eraser. Start by drawing two value scales. One for your words, and one for your background. This value scale should be one inch wide and six inches tall. Then create a six inch by six inch box that you divide into four sections. Remember, measure twice, draw once. Start by sketching the same four forms that we did for our graphite pencil research. So we're going to start with a circle, excuse me, a sphere, a cube, a cylinder, and a cone. Remember, don't forget those previous skills. Use the line of symmetry to draw the cone. Draw the corner of the cube first. Once you've finished sketching the objects and their cast shadows, erase any lines you don't need, including any guidelines and where the object overlaps with the background. Start with your words first. You want, your, you want to use dark at the top and light at the bottom. I recommend using your secondary color for your words and your primary color for your background. For my complementary color pair, I've chosen orange and blue. You want to start with the darker analogous colors first. I'm using both my dark red and light red for the dark values of my secondary color. Then I add my midtone, which is orange, And finally, my lighter analogous color, which is yellow. Go over the whole thing again one time with orange just to make sure you have a smooth transition. This is what I call the touch-ups phase. When shading your primary color, start with the darker tone first. Just like we did before, you want to create a smooth transition between your dark tone and your light tone. And as you get towards the lighter side, use lighter pressure to help transition into white. Now let's begin shading in our form. You want to start first by erasing the outline. When you mix the gray of the graphite with the colored pencil, especially oranges and yellows, you'll get a kind of muddy tone, which is not what we want. We want pure, bright hues when we shade. So replace that graphite with your base color. In this case, blue for the background and orange for the object. Also, don't forget to add in those cast shadows once again with your background base tone. When shading, I like to work dark to light, regardless of whether I'm using graphite pencils or colored pencils. So I start with my darker analogous color for my shadow. creating a soft transition between one value and the next. When I start to transition between my darkest shadow and my midtone, I switch and use my red or, or excuse me, the red orange or lighter red pencil. Again, remember, you have a variety of pencils at your disposal. Try and use them. Next, I'm going to create my highlight underlayer. 
the, you want to use the lighter analogous color of your brace, in this case yellow, to create that highlight. After adding in your shadow and your highlight, add in your base color, in my case, orange. This is what we call the midtone. Color pencil is all about layers, so you want this light yellow layer to shine through your orange. That's why I start with my shadows and highlights first, before I shade in the object. Again, you want to, uh, you want to have a smooth transition between values, so I recommend using medium pressure over the shadow and light pressure over the highlight. Begin touch-ups, adding layers, and erasing around the edge. Now it's time to shade in our cast shadow. Use your darker tone for the cast shadow, starting dark right next to the object and fading away as it moves away. Use a variety of pressures for your background. I will be using medium pressure for the surface that the object is sitting on and light pressure for the background. The last thing we'll want to do is to use our eraser to add in that reflected light, specifically where the cast shadow meets the core shadow, or the shadow on the object. So again, don't forget, first step, erase the outline and replace it with your base color. Add the shadows using the darker analogous color. Make sure to use all pencils available, including the dark tone and light tone. Add in the highlight using the lighter tone and create a smooth transition using your base color or mid-tone. Continue doing touch-ups until you create a smooth transition between values. Don't forget to add your cast shadows and shading in medium pressure for your table and light pressure for your background. Stay tuned while I finish shading in my comb. If you have any questions as you continue to do this project, please let me know. I look forward to seeing your non-local color shapes and forms. Good luck!